Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. Happy New Year, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Hello, yeah. good. How are you? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Happy Year. New Year. Man, I think I've already broken my my resolution already. I I, I was what supposed was your to resolution? eating clean. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, yeah, it's yeah, it's been it's been a dirty week so far. So, <laughs> but and you were just talking about I, cheesesteaks. We were talking about cheesesteaks before we got on it, and uh, and that, that's that's pushing me further away from my my resolution. So I appreciate you appreciate y'all for that. But hopefully, you all um, had a wonderful New Year's. We did. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to kick the new year off right here on Chief Chat because we got a, uh, a guest that I'm sure that most of y'all seen on your television screen. So without further ado, uh, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. Today's guest is a longtime actor who has gained accolades for his work in film, TV and theater. He's known for his roles in The Green Mile, St. Elsewhere, Disturbia and House. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to David Morris. Yeah. How are you all? We're, we're doing good. How you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm sorry to hear you're not beaten clean, but um, good luck with that. <laughs> Listen, I, start, I got I got to date. I got to third the third of January just fine, and then it, things got weird on over. the fourth. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, but thank you so much for joining us here on Chief Chat, and it's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, can you let our audience know uh, where you're joining us from? Yeah, I'm here in uh, Philadelphia, a city I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of. And uh, I grew up in New England, lived, uh, you know, New York and, and L.A. And here we are in Philadelphia, and it's a great place to be. So before we get started with the interview, I just want to see, uh, do, you, do you have a football team? Listen, I'm in Philadelphia. I think you've got some football than this. Yeah. So, so we're, we're in Dallas, and so obviously – there's there's a there's a game this weekend that we're hoping that Philadelphia doesn't quite win and we and, and we we absolutely win uh, that way we can yeah. take this uh, division but uh yeah, yeah but I don't want to get into no go ahead <laughs> no I, I just hope we can still talk to each other <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome yeah. Now, let, let's go ahead and switch gears before we get booted. So <laughs> your acting <laughs> career has spanned more than four decades. How did you get yeah. first? How did you first get started in this business? No, I was um, I was really blessed. Uh, I did um, a lot of theater in high school um, and we had a fantastic woman who uh, guided us um, there in our, in our, in our, not only just in our, 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 art theater acting. Uh, she was my English teacher as well, but really as a, as a real role model and how to live as human beings. She was very involved with civil rights and um, she was a real mentor to all of us. And I, uh, in my senior year, I did a play called The Zoo Story and um, someone who, who directed it, um, it was a two character play and um, and he suggested he had graduated from the same school I was I was a part of, and he had had a kind of a breakdown. He was there, kind of get healthy, and directed this play. And he suggested that I audition for a company called the Boston Repertory Theater that was forming in Boston that he was a member of. So at 17 years old, I skipped school. I went into Boston, um, and I auditioned in an apartment for this. Uh, for this this new company, I went into a room with the artistic director. We come out and he introduced me as the newest member of their company, and I did repertory theater for six years before I went to New York. It was a it was a great start to 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 my to my life. Yeah, that sounds awesome. like a blast. I wish I could have skipped school to do an audition for something. So 
No, you've had a yeah. quick, crazy life for sure. <laughs> Now, yeah. I'm hoping my kids aren't watching this at all because I don't need them to get any type of motivation to to do anything, uh, to, to skip school or to do anything. But uh, no, it, that, that, that obviously worked out for you, though. Yeah, you know, it's hard to, uh, hard having three kids and encouraging them to stay in school. Uh, you know, clearly I wasn't the greatest example. Um, but my wife, she, she did stay in school. And she did pretty well. So all your kids um, stay in school. Do your work. <laughs> Go have good lives. Oh, that's awesome. Um, my mom actually took me out of school once for an audition, and I uh, played Cupid the reindeer, and that was my only that was my only role. Um, so I think I had to find a different career after playing a reindeer. Um, so acting is not for me. But you have played such a wide range of roles from he villains to heroes, anti-heroes, leading men, supporting characters. So how do you choose your roles? You know, I'm, I'm an actor first. Uh, I'm, you know, they're, 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 I don't want to, this may sound disrespectful um, to, uh, to actors, um, but I start doing, like I said, theater. I did a lot of kinds of characters. Um, and I played small role as part of a repertory company, and, and, and we all had to do everything. And I have taken that with me in Georgetown. Um, I, I, I like the range of characters I get to do, and, and if, I, you know, I, if I just wanted to get slotted and do one sort of thing, I could have done that. And here you got St. Elsewhere. After I did St. Elsewhere, I, um, I was offered a lot of the same kind of character that I played on St. Elsewhere, and it just wasn't interesting to me. I, I, I could have kept doing just television series, playing the same kind of character, and um, I think I just sort of would have died inside if I did that. So mm -hmm. I, I, I pick it based on do I have just sort of a gut response to the character itself and, and the people involved. And it, I don't you know if it's a small independent movie, if it's a play, in New York on Broadway, if it's a movie, big movie, um, I just like to give myself over to all the different worlds and characters that I've been, been offered. And, you know, just talking to you to probably the past, you know, uh, several minutes, you seem real calm and kind of mild mannered. And then to kind of see the different roles that you've played, it's like, man, this, he's, he's a really good actor. Like he's, he can go from like mentally ill and or freaking villain and because uh, I'm I'm kind of playing back some of the movies that I've seen you in and, and just talking to you for the past ten minutes you seem like man he's just super cool chill calm collective and then you know then I see you in a in a jail cell with a cigarette and so it just it just you know it <laughs> <laughs> my mind just going all yeah. over the place. Well, the mentally ill isn't such a stretch, but the you know there are other things. <laughs> So yeah, you've also played several. So uh, you've also played several military roles. So uh, how do you approach yeah. your preparation preparation for military characters? You know, it's a different thing. I, I'll mention four of them because it's different for all of them. Um, obviously, I did The Rock. Uh, um, you know, which we shot on Alcatraz. Uh, Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, um, Ed Harris, Michael Bay directed it. Um, the Hurt Locker, Catherine Bigelow, um, Jeremy, Jeremy Renner is fantastic at that. All those you know, guys are fantastic at that. Um, played George Washington in uh, John Adams, um, the, the miniseries for uh, HBO. And I played General MacArthur for a, a, a miniseries that really was only shown in Japan. Um, for The Rock, we... We actually worked with uh, a group of SEALs who were in the movie. Um, if you watch the movie, the, um, there's a big scene in the middle of it where there's a shootout. And, uh, all the Navy SEALs are, are down below. And um, it was very emotional to play that scene because these were all the guys we had trained with. They'd taken out itself for two weeks, taught us, you know, all of us actors, really a lot of what we knew about uh, military uh, life and training. And it was a very intense couple of weeks, and and then on the on Alcatraz uh, where we, where we were for for months, and um, uh, they were really inspiring. These guys, 
um, so that that was so they they got us in a right headspace and sort of a you know feeling for their world. And um, when I did the Hurt Locker some years later, uh, the guys who were the um, um, the advisors on that uh, knew all the guys that we'd worked with on on the Rock, and it, and this was before the Iraq War, and when the Iraq War happened. Uh, a lot of those guys who we worked with on the rock went to serve in the Iraq war and uh, a number of them died there, which was of course heartbreaking. Um, uh, but the guys on, on the hurt locker, I didn't have to train so much for that. Cause I was, you know, I wasn't in it for that long. I was playing a military officer and there was no real combat that I was involved with. Um, but again, just to, touch on their lives and, and get to uh, spend time with them. It's it just, it is so helpful um, and moving and uh, inspiring. And Washington, to play General Washington, um, I didn't even know, I, I, I'd heard for, for maybe a year I was gonna do that role. And and then when they actually, I was, I, I, I sort of, I don't know, tell you how, but, the director for that, he wasn't on it. So they hadn't chosen a director yet. They called Giamatti and they had the same manager. And they, they were, he had some uh, approval of the director. And I had seen something the director who ultimately did it had done. And I, I suggested to that Paul should um, really think about this director. So he, he, with that director. And John Adams. So they offered the role of Washington to um, some other actors. Um, and I'd been, you know, growing my hair and reading about Washington. As soon as I heard he did one, it was, that was over. Uh, and the other actors they, they, uh, they um, offered it to uh, wound up not doing it. And then two weeks before they started shooting, while I'm doing another movie, they offered me the role of Washington. So I had two weeks to prepare for to play General Washington. Um, and I, I did not stop reading from the moment I was offered the role till I finished shooting the role months later. And uh, the big thing I had to do for that was he was, Washington was, was reputed to be the greatest horseman in the country. So I spent a lot of, um, in uniform in, on horses, learned to ride, uh, like he did. And, uh, have a comfort on the horses, which we never wound up shooting when we shot John Adams. Um, on a and the same sort of thing happened when I played MacArthur. I, I was doing a series called Treme in New Orleans, and uh, it was a pretty short notice to play MacArthur, and he's really a daunting, amazing figure. Um, so I did the best I could with that. Again, reading, trying to, to you know listen to his speeches, uh, whatever I could absorb before I went over to Japan and, and shot it over there. So it was a little bit different for each of these things. Yeah. And, and we appreciate, um, you know, how actors really kind of try to capture the essence of, of a military duty or the military character they're portraying. And uh, we, we, you know, as military members, when we watch military movies, we're always looking for something that doesn't look right or, or we're always mm -hmm. kind of, critiquing, uh, especially like I always use the example of Transformers when Tyrese was like a tech sergeant one year and he was a chief mass sergeant the next year. And then he had the rank all over the place. And of course, we we all know Transformers was a it, it's it's designed to do that. But uh, yeah, but it, we just appreciate actors really, uh, really diving in and, and becoming that character and really telling our stories uh, from, yeah. from their vantage. Point. So thank you for that. Well, we really appreciate what you do, and we really want to honor you as well. I think I can speak for most actors who, who, you know, smart actors who offer roles of military characters. You know, we want to do right by you. Um, so thank you. Absolutely. And you also have a history of service in your family. So can you tell us more about those in your family who have served in the military and how that kind of influenced you as well? Yeah, I had, you know, military all over the place. All, all my uncles were in the military. My grandmother, who I, who I, I, I was, you know, quite a bit, I didn't really know her well. 
because there was such an age difference. But she had, she served in the Navy, I'm pretty sure, before she even had the right to vote. And she was uh, in the military for quite a while down in Panama um, and, uh, and down in the Caribbean. Um, so, uh, my, the, probably the most influential were two, my, my Uncle Steve was my mother's youngest brother for quite a bit. He, when I knew him as a kid, we all adored him. He, uh, he was an Eagle Scout. He was just the sweetest, you know, uncle to have. His brothers were, were older and they'd been in the military. And Steve went off to Vietnam. Uh, and I remember being in bed praying for him every night while he was, while he was in Vietnam. Uh, and he was in there in uh, um, 67, I think, 68. Um, we were all, all about him. And he, he had changed him. It was rough on him. Um, you know, at that time, military, he was small and they let him have it. And uh, he would, you know, tell us, he could not tell us everything. Like everybody who comes back, it's hard to talk about that stuff. But, um, uh, you know, the choices he would have to make in Vietnam and the things he had to do were brutal. Uh, and and, and it, it stuck with him his, his, his whole life. My mother, when she remarried, she remarried uh, Dick Fellows, who was uh, in the 10th Mountain Division in, uh, in, in Italy. He was, uh, um, grew up in Bangor, Maine, um, son of a doctor. And it was the same sort of thing. He's this, you know, really earnest, sweet young guy, played the violin, um, uh, good in school, but he skied. And he was a fantastic skier and uh, taught skiing. And he wound up uh, in that, that original 10th Mountain and trained um, in New Hampshire, um, Mount Washington, went out to Camp Hale, um, uh, Colorado, um, you know, did all the training on Mount Rainier and then went off. And he was uh, in the infantry and he was responsible for dragging all those uh, that that hardware through up through the, you know, into the Po Valley. And he was one of the guys who climbed the, the in the night um, and surprised the Germans um, uh, in, uh, you know, where they were encamped. And he, he was really an inspiring man. Uh, he was my, my definition. My, my father was a little challenging, loved him, but he was challenging. And Dick was really, for me, the example of what a man, a man is. Yeah. Well, well, huge shout out to um, to all of your family members that served, and and as you kind of described, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that you know that you know when when we're serving the country that um, that we see or witness or be a part of that that it's tough for us to talk about or or just, you know, unpack uh, and, and, you know, we're not really prepared for it. It's just, it is, it's just is what it is. And, but, um, you know, to have people to appreciate, say, thank you, especially um, the Vietnam veterans, they weren't, they weren't brought home. So your uncle, uncle Steve, that was in Vietnam, uh, you know, the country was in a different place uh, when those Vietnam vets came home. So uh, just want to say thank, thank everybody for their service out there, uh, past, present, um it's you know it's 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 an honor for me to to uh to be a part of this this brotherhood brother and sisterhood that we have here in the military uh but you've also just always been a big supporter of the troops and you even participated in a, a resiliency project uh for veterans uh what did that project involve and what was that experience like um yeah this i it, they came to me they were gonna do a movie uh at that time and it still is. Um, the Resiliency Project was connected with the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm obviously here in Philadelphia. Uh, and and they knew the, the work I'd done in the movies. And there was uh, they wanted to make a, a, a movie um, where they show military members and families of military members in different situations and how to prepare uh, psychologically for the pressures and situations the military uh, members find themselves in. Um, and they wanted me to play the, the sort of the character that brings everybody through the, all the stories and scenarios. 
and uh, the characters of Master Chief. Um, and I was honored to be asked that, you know, uh, I, you know, especially once these wars, the, the, the Iraq war broke out, I just wanted to find some way of doing something to give back. And, th and it was important for me to do this. Uh, I spent, uh, we spent a couple of weeks shooting spent a lot of time with military members, actors who are portraying military members. Um, again, it just, you know, it just feels like an honor to be asked to do anything like that. So uh, I was glad to be something, part of something that, that is reaching out in really important ways at, at a time that was tough for a lot of people coming back. We're serving so many tours. Uh, I mean, you all know it. And, and, and how hard that was on, on families and members, soldiers. Um, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, I don't have to describe it, you know what's going on. So it was great to, to, to be a part of something that, that, that could uh, be positive and helpful. Um, and, and there was also something else that I was asked to do later, if you want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I, I did something here. I, do, I, was, I did a series here called Hack, and I, I did the lead in that. And we did that for a couple of years. And we shot at the VA, VA hospital. And while we were shooting, I just went in. I, you know, I walked around and I uh, met people who were in there. Um, I went through, to, you know, went through the rooms and said hi and chatted. And you know, I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed being people and talking with people. Um, sometime after that, there was a something in Philadelphia called the Fringe Project. And I was asked to do something in that. It was one person. It was a one event, one person a performance, which I did. And after it, uh, a woman named Gidge Cole introduced herself to me. And she, um, she was a psychologist and had worked at the VA hospital and also at the Vet Center in Philadelphia. And she gave me her card and she told me, she was aware that I'd been at the VA and talked to people and gone around and said hi and wanted me to know how much the people appreciated it. Uh, and she said, if I ever want to do that again, to let her know. And I, I, and I kept thinking about that. I thought, I don't, as much as I like to go around to say hi to people and spend a little time, I really wanted to do something more than that. And so after thinking about it for a while, I called her and said, listen, if there's anything else that you would, you would like to do or you're thinking of, let, let me know. And as part of her work at the Vet Center in Philadelphia, uh, downtown, um, she works with, with men and not many women there, which is, uh, I was there for a couple of years. Um, really, the, the women were working in the office. I didn't really see coming in for work with her, but she, she worked with the uh, individuals and, and it was like a three-year process. And the third year was the group, the trauma exposure group. And she asked, she told me that she wanted to try to figure out how to use acting as a part of that. And she had written out a bunch of stuff and showed me that. And I looked at it, I thought, I'm not sure this is gonna work the way she's hoping. And I, when I trained, when I eventually went to New York and trained for acting, uh, I studied with uh, uh, a man named William Esper, who was part of the Sanford Meisner training. Um, and they, that's a particularly life-changing experience, that training. And I thought that training might be really good for the, the members of this, this drama exposure group. So I proposed that to her. Um, and we decided to do it, to, to spend a year. I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. I had to invent it kind of when we both had invented on the fly. And I had to come into a group of men. It was almost all, at that point, Vietnam vets. They were almost all older. There were a few. There were a couple from the... the you know, most recent Iraq war. Um, uh, and uh, one from the first Iraq war. Um, and it was, you know, I really had to earn their trust. Because I didn't, I wasn't sure what I was doing. They weren't sure what I was doing there. And uh, they were talking about stuff there that they don't even talk about with their families. So to come into their group and be a member of that group, it took a little time. And once we started working, um, we we could just sense this was this was right. Um, they could they they you know they brought me in, and you know of all the things I felt honored about, 
I think that group made me feel the most so because they were letting me into something so private. Um, in, in, in eternal, yeah. Um, and so we did one year of it and uh, their families were, you know, fun dinner at the end of it and their families were there and they wanted to be there to say how grateful they were to, you know, for this year. And because things happen, part of what this training is that I did, the acting training, is about putting your attention off yourself and onto the person that you're working with. Um, you know, and that frees you up. It frees you up emotionally in, in expressing, you know, you, know you, 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 you leave yourself alone and um, in doing these scenes that we did and improvising things. Um, things that came out, they, they, they weren't protecting themselves as much. They weren't, you know, sort of giving the little details. They, they just came through emotionally and with stories that, that Gidge, who, you know, who, who was running this, said they hadn't even talked to her uh, in the private sessions and it came out here. So it was, it was really a remarkable experience. Yeah, that's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, it's incredible to see everything that, you know, you do behind the scenes so we can see it on the screen and everything it takes mm -hmm. to get to that point. So that's awesome. Yeah. And, um, since we're kind of on a similar um, subject, we do have service members and military families watching us live from around the world um, mm -hmm. right now. What message would you like to share with them today? Well, first, Happy New Year to all of you. Um, you know, again, I mean, you've heard me say this over and again, again on this, how, how grateful I am to, to all of you, every single one of you. Um, you know, you, you've made choices about your life that a lot of people do not make. Um, and there are sacrifices that you make to, to, to live the lives you're living. And, and, um, and, and most of us will not ever know that. Uh, so I really wish you the absolute best um, and uh, for you and your families. And, and all of you just take good care of each other. Um, you're, you're a special, special people. Well, David, thank you for those uh, kind words. And, um, and, and like I said, we, we appreciate you for, you know, doing things like that, opening up, you know, lanes of, of therapy um, for, for service members. Uh, I, I got a chance to, you know, volunteer at some VA hospitals uh, throughout my career. And, um, you know, if you want to hear some stories and if you really want to connect with people, uh, go to a VA hospital and just have a conversation with a few people. It's, you know, you, you'll hear some stories that are, that are hilarious and, 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 and heart wrenching at the same, at the same time. And so, uh, thank you for, you know, all your support that you've had for the military community. Yeah. I would say that humor is a big part of it. Uh, I know, you, you, huge. You, yeah. Huge. Yeah. But uh, but you you've worked in in film, television, and theater. Is there um, how do, how does each compare? And do you have like a favorite medium that you? Well, when I when when I started when I started acting, I was doing theater. I I, you know, I didn't even imagine. I wasn't even thinking about movies or TV. Um, and when I went to New York after six years and studied, and as soon as I got out, uh, I started trying to do plays in New York. I got an agent, and then I wound up starring in the first movie I ever did. It was pretty quickly after I finished studying. A movie called Inside Moves. And I thought, well, this is it. I'm, you know, I'm going to do movies and um, and uh, theater, and I hope I never do television in my life. I, I, I didn't think much of it at the time. It was great. I thought it was the end of the world. Um, and I did that movie, and then I could not get another one, and I spent the next 10 years doing nothing but theater, I've been nothing but television. Um, and I did that series St. Elsewhere for six years. And I did a lot of TV movies. Um, I just, oh my God, I just wanted to do a movie again. Um, I got offered a lot of movies, but I couldn't get out of St. Elsewhere to do any of them. Um, but St. Elsewhere was part of Hill Street Blues at that time. And there had been some other shows that were kind of paving the way, but 
those were shows that really changed the course of television. And a lot of what we think of now as the best of television had roots in there, um, uh, in, in those shows, and the writers that came out of those shows wanted to create these other shows. And now the television is fantastic. You know, we, we see things on there, series on there, actors on there, creators on there, uh, and getting to really live interesting uh, characters for, you know, movies, you got the two hours that a character lives in. And now you got these great characters that live beyond that. Um, uh, and as much as I love all of that, theater is still really uh, what I love the most. I just I just did a play on Broadway that the first time we did it, uh, it was 25 years ago, we did it off Broadway. It's called How I Learned to Drive. And it uh, won the Pulitzer Prize, won every every prize it could possibly win. It was one of the great experiences of all of our lives, but never made it to Broadway. It only took 25 years to get there. And so we finally got to do it on Broadway last spring. And, and that really was a 25 year experience. And uh, it was a great one. Now, and a lot of your work, as you mentioned, like it set the foundation for the future. So for TV and the future for films, and it's received a lot of awards and nominations. So what are some projects that you wish more people would discover? So some projects you were in um, or that you had your hand in when it came to directing or otherwise? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, um, it's mostly the independent movies they, they have such a, it's such a hard road. It's so hard to get them made in the first place. Uh, to, to get the money, to get them distributed, the whole thing. It's, it's never been easy. It's not easy now, even though it seems like there's a lot out there and, and there have been a lot out there. That's a hard road. So um, it's, it's mostly independent movies. There's nobody can see, but there's a couple of plays I wish the people had seen. Uh, um, one where I actually played a, a Vietnam vet who was living in the woods in the Redwood Forest. And uh, that was a play that meant a lot to me. But anyway, um, I, did, I did a couple of movies that Sean Penn directed. The first, the first one was called The Indian Runner. Viggo Mortensen is in it, Patricia Arquette, Hilaria Galena, Dennis Hopper was in it. Um, and it was Sean's first. He wrote it and directed it. Uh, and it meant a lot to be asked by Sean, who at that time was one of the biggest movie stars in the world, to star in the first movie that, that he ever directed. And there were a lot of movie stars who wanted to do it, and he, he, he wanted them. But he had seen me when I did that very first movie I did, Inside Moves. Um, uh, and, and apparently he wrote, as a teenager, he saw it, and he wrote me a letter, which I don't remember ever getting. And, but he wrote me a letter to say how much he, he liked what I did in that. And then all these years later, when he was a big movie star, he, he fought for me to be one of the leads along with Vigo in this, in this Indian Runner. And while we were shooting Indian Runner, he came to me with a scene that he was writing. He was in his trailer, I was in my trailer, he came over and knocked on my door and he gave me the scene and said, uh, what do you think? Go read it and tell me what you think. I said, oh, it's a great scene, great scene, what are you gonna do? He said, I'm, I don't know, I don't know, but, but, and they wrote another scene. Eventually he wrote a movie called The Crossing Guard that we wound up doing with Jack Nicholson and that, that was about four years later. And those two movies meant a lot to me because I, I had not been doing, like I said, I'd done 10 years of television. I'd done one movie, small, you know, role, sporting role in a movie um, that Sean had seen. And here he was fighting for me to do a lead in his movie. And, uh, and again, when we did Cross Guard, he had, he had to fight for me to do the lead in that with Jack Nicholson. So that's been a lot to me. And there was one other film called um, The Slaughter Rule that I did with Ryan Gosling. And Ryan Gosling had just been a Mouseketeer and uh, had done a couple of little little movies. You know, he could have gone off and been with like Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake, who they'd all been there together. Uh, but he wanted to be an actor. And these, these uh, the Smith brothers, Alex and Andrew Smith, had written a fantastic um, uh, movie. Uh, about six man football and um, he, they wanted me to do the lead in that and I read with all these uh, these young actors and there was one young actor they're really good um, uh, but there was one who was just like he just stood up to me no matter what I did 
Uh, he just kind of went toe to toe with me. I said, oh my God, this is the guy you got to get. Um, he reminded me so much of people like Sean and uh, Jack Nicholson. He just had that thing about him. And I think we've seen that thing for a while now. So that that's a movie that uh, I, I think people would, would enjoy if they saw that, Slaughter Rule. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's, let's get out there and, and check those movies out, definitely. Uh, I'm definitely have to uh, go on YouTube and see if I can find something out there. Um, mm -hmm. But you, but you, you've been you've been dropping some heavy hidden names uh, that you've been able to work with it throughout your career. Um, do you have any acting heroes that really influenced you, uh, kind of growing up? And do you have a bucket list of, of actors that you would want to work with in the future? Well, when I started, when I was doing theater, like I said, I didn't know I'd be doing movies, and the the actors who really influenced me were all English actors, uh, Laurence Olivier. You know, John Gilgo and all of them, because we were doing this repertory theater. Every night, we're doing a different play, so I had to be one character on one night, another character the next night, and those were the guys with all their. And I thought that's what acting, the great acting was. So they were really my first influence. And then when I went to New York and studied, I had a, a friend that I did play with. And he was a lover of uh, old movies, Spencer Tracy, Humphrey Bogart, which I never really paid attention to, Jimmy Stewart. And he, I did, we did a play together, and I, his name was Tom Ryan. And he's a, he was a, a Marine, Marine at heart. He still runs around with his, his Marine baseball hat everywhere he goes and gets oh, yeah. snacks for his service. <laughs> um, um, but he had me watch those movies. So people like Spencer Tracy were my next ones. Um, and, and I just, you know, that, that, that kind of acting, I really started to get it along with the training I was doing. Um, and then, I, you know, I got lucky to work with all these, uh, all these people. And Sean, who, who was such a fantastic guy, I didn't actually get to act with him because I was in his movies. And really, at that point, if I could act with anybody, I would have to work with Sean at least once in my life, of, you know, knowing him. Direct. I am. Oh, that's awesome. And um, switching gears a little bit to something that I think we all collectively agreed on before we went live: um, food. <laughs> so I read, <laughs> and I know that we talked a little bit about it. That um, you're a chef. You did say something funny um, before we went live that you're a chef for survival, which I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but it's a great hobby to have. Um, so what are some other hobbies and interests when you're not acting? Um, I, I think to call me chef, I think the people who really deserve to be called chef, let, let, let's, <laughs> let's let them, um, you know, I, 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 when, when, when I was a kid, my mother had to go back to school, and um, and I wound up doing you know laundry, and I had three younger sisters, and cooking for them, and helping get them out to school, and you know my my interest in cooking it was sort of forced on me, but I actually liked it. And all during high school, um, I bought myself a great chef knife, and um, I loved to, to play with food. Um, and then when I had absolutely no money at all, when I was doing theater. And I had my wok and a hot plate. I had to figure I'd use that for everything I ate. And I couldn't afford silverware, so I ate everything with chops. Um, and, and then as I got to, you know, having a family and then some food sensitivities, I, I, I really had to, it was, it was survival. Um, but now I've, I've learned a few things. Um, one, one of the things I did forever, I've been riding, you know, like a lot of people, bicycles since I was a kid. And I fell in love when I was out in Los Angeles. Mountain biking started up and road biking. And I was watching all those early, um, when, when the American um, road bike racers, uh, Greg LeMond and the uh, 7-Eleven team, all those riders first started coming to prominence. I, I just fell in love with bicycle racing and then mountain bike racing. Uh, and then have my own mountain bike. And I took it with my bikes everywhere with me on location and go discover the world and find trails. And um, I, I'd love that. And eventually I had enough falls and got injured enough um, 
I really had to be more careful about that when I was working. Uh, and then, uh, unfortunately, golf found its way into my life. Uh, I, you know, where we live in Philadelphia, everybody plays golf here. So socially, uh, you know, my kids were going to golf camp. I thought, for Pete's sake, I'm going to have to learn this stupid game. Um, <laughs> you know, it's got me in its grips. Um, but I like to write. And, uh, you know, I do a lot, a lot of different kind of writing. Um, and I might just, you know, hiking with my family, being with my family. Uh, that's 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 really the stuff. Well, well, we got we got a few things in common. Uh, well, besides the fact that you know that you, you're a world renowned actor and and all that stuff, uh, you you've been mistakenly called a chef, and and I get mistakenly called chef all the time, but that's because people misspell chief, and so it, it, it just I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. So I just like okay, I'll, I'll take it, even though you know I'm. If if I had to, you know, cook for survival, I probably wouldn't make it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, we're happy you're here. We're happy you survived. <laughs> no, it's been so great talking with you today, David. We've learned so much more about you. I know your fans are super excited to have heard from you today, and learn about what you like, all these different amazing details about your life, because it's so crazy. I never knew you started in theater before, you know, this experience, which mm -hmm. is exciting. I feel like we should have said theater. You know, you have to say it really cute when you say theater. But anyway, <laughs> where can people yeah. go more oh, to find more about your work and your causes and what's ahead for you? Mm -hmm. I did, there's a couple of things that I did. Um, there's a series called for Apple TV Plus, um, Jennifer Garner stars in it. Um, it's called The Last Thing He Told Me. It's from a book. It's a, I think it's a six part series, six or seven part series. And that should be out pretty soon. And there's a movie that, it's an independent movie um, about Mother Cabrini. And I'm sure you've all heard of Cabrini College. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, she was a remarkable woman and a wonderful actress, Italian actress. Uh, Christiana Delano plays uh, Mother Cabrini, and it's and it's the first years when she comes to to New York from Italy in the uh, the eighteen hundreds into the the worst neighborhood. Um, the if you ever saw Gangs in New York, she she went up in the middle of that that world, Gangs in New York world. Um, so that movie is out there, and that's supposed to be out maybe around Easter. So that's that's the stuff right now. So are you active on social media at all or? No, 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 no. I... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad, that's, yeah, that's a good way to be. I wish I could have more self-control and not be on social media. Yeah, this is this is as social as I get on media right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping there was a TikTok page with David Morris doing some, some weird dance or voiceover. Uh, Oh, but well, I guess apparently there's something out there pretending to be me, answering and some people <laughs> write into it thinking it's me, and and the, whoever has this page they respond as if it's me. My sisters get really pissed off. They keep writing into it and saying this is a bunch of baloney. <laughs> um, but they <laughs> so so if you yeah. so people out there if you get a message from David Morris it is not him. He is, he is not. <laughs> He is not tweeting or, or on Instagram mm -hmm. or any of that stuff. That's right. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So for our Chief Chat viewers, you can definitely find this episode as well as past Chief Chat episodes on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, tune in at 11 a.m. Central on January 10th when our guest will be comedian and military spouse Ashley Gutermuth. And also join us on 17 January at 11 a.m. when we have television writer and producer Howard Gordon on the chat. So, so David, uh, like like Kiana said, it's been a a, a blast talking to you today. Uh, just kind of hearing your story from where where it all started to uh, kind of what you're doing right now and everything in between. Mm -hmm. We definitely appreciate what you do for the military community uh, because you know what you do. Uh, your art form gives us an escape in in a, in a sense uh, of of the real world and all the the kind of craziness that we deal with on a day to day basis and. To, to able to be sit back and whether I'm watching a, a 30 minute series or a, a two hour movie, 
you know, just to be able to kind of, you know, take my mind off of something like that, man, that, that does more for our, our soul than, than you, I'm sure you realize it, but uh, just coming from a military member, it does more for our soul than you, you actually realize it. So thank you so much for what you do. Uh, and, and thank you for chatting with us today. You know, it's been great fun being with all with, with the three of you and with, with all the people who really are watching this. And so thank you for having me and being the, let me be a part of your community for a little bit. Absolutely. And so if you don't mind hanging on until we uh, until after the uh, the live chat uh, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. Uh, but we'll wrap up the show here. Uh, thank you so much again. Happy New Year's to everybody out there uh, out there at Exchange Family World and uh, Chief Chat out. <laughs>